A few weeks ago I thought I'd try a new method for creating headstock logos. Traditionally I've cut them out of mother of pearl by hand and it can be quite a time consuming business. So instead I thought I would try and 3D print some. It actually turned out quite nice. I was very happy with the results and it was an awful lot quicker. Typically if I was gonna cut one from mother of pearl, I'm looking at probably two hours of cutting time and then it's got to be kind of inlaid into the headstock, filled, finished off, etc. Takes a very, very long time. The 3D printed version, however, was an awful lot quicker. So a massive bonus there. Also working with mother of pearl when you're cutting it by hand, there is the issue of dust and the dust isn't particularly nice. So there's a health benefit from using the 3D printer too. Another useful element of this is all of the software that I use to create this is either free to download or free to use on the internet. So again, it's not a prohibitively expensive thing to do as long as you've got access to a 3D printer. Start the process off, I opened up GIMP, which is what I use to do all of my kind of graphic stuff. And I simply selected quite a chunky font. I think this one's called Wide Latin. And then I just typed out what I wanted on the logo, which is my surname, and added an underline to it. This was then saved out as a JPEG. Ideally, I'd be able to save them out as an SGV file, but I don't have that capability in GIMP. So from there, we went online to the Adobe SVG converter and just converted the JPEG into an SGV. And once we got that file, we simply import that into Tinkercad. And literally all I'm going to do here is size it down. And I sized it down to 55 millimeters by six. And the reason it's six millimeters will become apparent in a short while. Save that out and then open it up in Cura just to do the slicing. If you've got a 3D printer, you will have used some slicing software and you'll know how to set it up. Setting it up is a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but literally all I did was I duplicated it three times. So I've got three copies on the bed of the printer and then save that file out onto a little SD card, which goes into the printer and we print. Now this print actually takes about 20 minutes, which isn't a great deal of time in the grand scheme of things. And you don't have to do anything. You just set it going and, and leave it to do its little thing. And then once they come off the printer, this is what we end up with. And I think you can see there that that silk PLA does give a little bit of a iridescent look, a little bit like mother of pearl. So that's come out very nicely. So next up is we need to inlay these and this is actually a very straightforward process compared to what it used to be with the hand cut ones. Because I've made this rectangular and it's six millimeters, it is perfect for using the router to inlay it. And you can probably see I've got the router set up here ready to go. And I've got a little piece of, this is walnut and I'm going to kind of inlay it in there. This is a little bit lighter than I would use for a headstock. I would generally use rosewood, but I don't have a scrap piece of rosewood that I'm willing to sacrifice to do this. So first up, just break out some super glue and masking tape. And get this stuck down onto the bench. And then I've made a very, very simple template. It's basically just a slot that's wide enough to accept the bushing that I'm going to use on the router and long enough to accommodate my little logo. And again, we're just going to kind of fasten this down with some super glue and masking tape onto our little sample. that a couple of seconds to set up and then it is very quickly on with the ear defenders and just route out that slot. I've already set up the router bit 
so that at full plunge it will be kind of three or four millimeters below the template which is about what we want for the thickness of this little logo. And as quick as that, we're pretty much done. Let's give that a quick clean up. Now as it stands, my logo is probably going to be just a little bit too big to go in there. So I'm just going to and very quickly round off the corners. And this PLA really is quite soft, so it goes down very quickly. And there we are in. So I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer now so you can see exactly what I'm doing. We'll get this out, we'll get it stuck in and then we will get this filled to make it look like a proper logo with just the name and the underline showing. And straightforward. A little bit of super glue in the bottom. Stick that in. And that should stick in quite quickly. And then to fill all the gaps, I've got some, just some dust that I've gathered from other wood. Now this is going to be darker than the wood. As I explained earlier, I would generally use rosewood to do this, but I haven't got a bit. So we're going with the slightly lighter walnut. So this fill will be visible much more than it would be generally, but you get the idea of what I'm doing. And then I'm simply going to get some water thin super glue. One of these very small applicators. And just wick that in to that dust. And the oils in this wood dust act as like an accelerator so that will make the super glue go off very very quickly and from there I'm just going to have a go I'm just cleaning that up the hand plane gives us we're very close to our finished result. I think there's still a few voids there. So I'm just going to put a bit more dust on. And apply a little bit more of the super glue. And again, just leave that for a little while to go off. And there we have the finished article. And I think that looks really, really nice. Obviously, as I said, the fill is a little bit darker than I would want it to be if I was doing this for real. But other than that, that is absolutely spot on. Now the process of like designing and producing these was quite lengthy, probably took about an hour or so to do, but the actual installation was around about 20 minutes from start to finish, which is significantly quicker than doing it the old way. And I think that actually gives quite a nice result. And I'd be happy with that if it was in a guitar headstock, not a scrap piece of walnut. So for me, this is something that I want to kind of develop further, but it does give results straight out of the box. So very, very happy with that. Obviously, this is specific to me. You can do your logo exactly how you want them. Could be more intricate than this. It could be simpler. It's totally down to what you want. And you could also kind of design headstock inlays that aren't a logo. 
just a design motif or something and they could be done in exactly the same way it might just be a little bit more awkward to route out for them but again that's nothing that can't be done with a bit of a template and a pattern router bit obviously if you've got a 3d printer you could also use that to create the templates to do the routing might just take a little bit of maths to figure out the offsets and stuff so there's a lot of possibilities with this but for me that is a really good way of producing a quick and easy headstock inlay without having to go to the trouble of cutting mother of pearl. However, in true Blue Peter style, here's one I prepared earlier. So this was my initial test piece for when I did the, the first one on the guitar headstock. And as you can see on the appropriate wood with a bit of finish on, you can barely see that that's been filled at all. I think that one looks very, very nice. And I think just for a, see if we can demonstrate this, I'm going to simulate a finish. I'm just rubbing a bit of lemon oil on and that has kind of darkened that wood up to a, a greater extent and it has evened out that difference. So I think with a bit of finish on, that would look absolutely fine. Hopefully you found that useful. If so, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and I'll see you soon. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.